video, we're going to be talking about how to generate alerts within Mapipedia. So start by clicking on the alerts tab. Again, if you want more information, you can click on the I. So there are three main sections uh, that need to be considered when generating alerts. The first one is the contacts. So who do you actually want to receive these alerts? The rules. So under what conditions will these alerts be generated? And then there's the actual list of alerts themselves. So let's start by adding a contact. So if you click on the add button, and again, you can delete it pretty easily. Click on the text to, uh, to edit the details. So we can add in a name, we can add in an email address. And then when you add in the mobile phone number, you need to put it in, in an international format. So for Australia, we need to start with 61. And then if your phone number starts with 04, if it's a mobile number, um, then you leave out the first zero. So instead of putting in 0451, I would start with 451 and then 431 and 415. So this is my mobile phone number. Feel free to call me on that whenever you like. Um, but normally that's my mobile number, but to turn it into an international number, you need to remove the first zero and put it uh, with a plus six one or whatever is the right number for the country that you're in. And you can also add in WhatsApp details. Again, it's a similar kind of format. You need to put in the, the country code and put in the full number. Now, when you actually um, put in these contact details, it's a good idea to test them. So click on, a, on the test button just to actually make sure that an email is sent there. So that checks a few things. It'll tell you if the email arrives or maybe it's going to arrive in the spam folder or maybe it doesn't arrive at all. And if that's the case, then get in contact with us and we can look into that. Um, and also with a mobile phone number, again, you can click on the test and with WhatsApp, click on the test. Just make sure that these messages are getting through before you start relying on them for any kind of uh, alerting uh, possibilities. So we'll see here, we've got these three options under John Smith, and then we can add another contact and we can say Jane Smith and uh, put in my number again obviously in reality you put in a different one and you don't have to fill in all these fields they're all optional but obviously at least one of them should be filled in or you won't actually receive any alerts and you can test them again so now we have two contacts we've got john smith and jane smith uh, you only have to have one of course if you if you want to um, and then with the rules so we'll, so these rules define when alerts will actually be generated now at the moment the only types of rules so we we'll click on add and um, make sure the apply button is selected when you want the rules to actually be generated. And we can, let's call this the flood zone alert. And at the moment we only have one type of alert and that's a geofence alert. So in other words, if an animal is not inside a geofenced area, which could be a paddock when it's supposed to be inside it, or if it's or if it's not outside it when it's supposed to be inside it like a flood zone so if, if an animal is supposed to be outside of a flood zone and it's gone inside then we can generate an alert um, and in order to do that we need to have a tag group and we need to have the geofence set up uh, so we haven't really set up the the tag group yet so let's just set up a tag group for all the animals because we don't want any animals inside the flood zone so uh, let's go to our groups we'll select all the animals so now we've got 12 animals that have been selected and we'll add this and we'll call this. Uh, first of all, we want to put these 12 into the group. So click on edit. Yes, we want to add those 12. So click OK. So now we've, and we'll call this all tags group. And we'll, we'll create two different types of alerts. So while we're here, we also want to make sure that all the Woodstock animals are inside the Woodstock geofence. So we'll create, we'll create two alerts, one for the flood zone and one for Woodstock. So let's create um, a set of animals um, that defines what should be in Woodstock. So if we um, go to the uh, the geofences tab and if we select the tags, so notice how there's 12 because there's actually another one in New South Wales down here. Okay, there's 11 up here and one down here. So if we, uh, and, and so that we can currently see 12 and there are 12 that are selected. If I select the tags that are in Woodstock, we can see that that's now gone down to 11. So these are the 11 tags here that are part of Woodstock. So let's create a Woodstock group. So uh, we come in here, let's call it the Woodstock group. And we want these 11 selected tags to be added to that group. 
okay so we've got the all tags group because we don't want any animals at all in the flood zone and then we've got the woodstock group because if any of these 11 tags leave the woodstock group we want to get an alert obviously it's okay for the animal that's in new south wales to leave this group so we don't to leave this geofenced area so we don't want an alert for that animal that's already outside here so that's why we've created these groups now if we go back to our alert and we want to define this rule so we'll define two rules we can say um, the flood zone uh, the flood zone alert and it's a geofence alert so we do want to add more alert types in the future so if an animal is stuck for example or if an animal has been isolated from the rest of the herd uh, we can generate some alerts if you want alerts generated for anything else then let us know we can talk about that um, so for the flood zone alert we don't want any tags or any animals we could have called this the all animals group uh, we don't want any of them inside so if the animal is inside the um, the geofenced area for the flood zone then we want to get an alert and uh, we want both John and Jane to receive the alert so if you hold down the control key on your keyboard you can select them both otherwise if you just click on them you'll, you'll only get one of them and then we click OK and what that's going to do is um, is if any animals go inside the flood zone then we will get an alert and, uh, and now let's add another one for if animals leave the woodstock zone or geofence so we add this here and we're going to call this the uh, woodstock uh, alert and we want to say if any of the woodstock group go outside the woodstock geofence then we want both john and jane again holding down the control key to get a um a, a, an alert and because we have defined email mobile and whatsapp then all the alert will be sent on all three channels if you only want an, an email alert then don't populate the other ones so so and that's that's how you set up an alert okay um and we'll put it put out some more tutorials for different types of alerts when they become available but but currently that's the functionality that exists today as of the 25th of april 2021 and then uh but before these alerts actually get um activated if you like um so there's this uh this text in red down the bottom once you click ok um the, they'll get activated when you save to the server so these alerts don't run within the browser they run on the server so in order for in order for the server to find out that you've actually created alerts you have to save them and the reason they run on the server is so that if you close your browser and your computer's turned off uh, you can still receive alerts uh, because they're because they're calculated on the server or generated on the server and then if you do actually receive an alert um, what happens is you um, it's a fairly simple text it'll just be you know mappypedia alert generated uh visit this link for details and the link will be uh your page and it will also um uh, default to coming to this alerts tab and it will tell you what the type of the name uh the, the alert name so in this case it'll be the flood zone alert or woodstock stock alert because they're the only ones that currently exist these are from other demonstrations these ones and it'll give you the date and time so the idea is that you would open up the link you would come to here and you'd say oh hang on we've received a flood zone alert um, if you want to find out more details about what that means you can click on here and, and get the details of what the flood zone alert is and then you need to um, and then you can and then you can act on that now because the uh, data on the servers get updated every 15 minutes um, you'll continue to get this alert every 15 years uh, every 15 minutes until you actually disable the alert so it's recommended that once you actually uh, receive an alert uh, and you and you visited it here that you come over here and you disable the alert until you've addressed the problem otherwise you might start sending out lots of alerts to people for things that they already know about and you'll get lots of text messages and whatsapp messages and emails uh, so, so it's probably a good idea to disable that but in order to disable that and then save it you do have to have right access to the page so just keep that in mind if you don't have that access then try and get in contact with someone who does otherwise you might end up getting more alerts than you care to get for example if a if an animal were to be stolen uh, and was outside the woods uh, the woodstock geofence or if it's escaped and you're aware of it and you're tracking it down and the, or the police know about it and, and they're, they're going to try and get the animal um, then you can um, you can disable this until the problem's been resolved now if you do come across a situation where you need to move animals out so let's just say that you know 
Uh, we've got our animals inside a, inside a Woodstock zone, and then the Woodstock animals, but then you decide that you want to, um, you know, bring in a truckload of animals, or you want to take out part of these animals and sell them off, um, or, or put them in another paddock or something like that. When that happens, so let's just say um, that we change the size of this Woodstock zone. Um, so rather than moving the animals out, we'll, uh, we'll change the size, size of the zone because all the animals are, are in here. Um, so let's just edit this quickly. So let's just say that you know these animals here got moved out of the Woodstock zone and we wanted to up, update the Woodstock group, okay? Because uh, you don't want to get alerts for these ones anymore. They've been they've been taken out of the uh, the zone or the or the geofence, and um and and they're meant to be outside. So you don't want to be getting alerts. They've been moved to another paddock or sold. Then you can come along here and just click on the tags group again. Click on this tags button, and now these are the animals that are now in that zone in that geofenced area. So if you've added animals or if you've taken them out, as soon as you click on this, that will update them, and then uh, you can update the group. So now instead of having so now we've got four animals. So we go to this group and we say, instead of having 11 animals in this Woodstock group, we've now only got four. So you just update that and uh, and that'll get updated like that. And then make sure you save the changes to the server. So that's how you deal with uh, animals that are coming and going in groups that might need to change. And then um, that Woodstock group will get applied to the rule that's already in place. The other thing to consider with these alerts is that the, um, there's actually a bit of inaccuracy in the actual GPS locations. And there's probably gonna be a bit of inaccuracy, uh, maybe it might only be a couple of meters, but there'll be a bit of inaccuracy uh, in the geofences that you actually set up. So if, if there's um, animals that are sitting along a fence line that might that might represent the uh, outside of a geofenced area, because the GPS reading could be, you know, out by five or 10 or 20 meters, um, the reading might actually say that they're outside that zone when really they're inside and we don't want to be sending false alerts. So the way these alerts actually work in reality is that um, the animal needs to be, so if there's a if there's an error of say five meters in the GPS reading, the animal needs to be outside the, G, the uh, geofenced area by five meters plus another 20 meters for error, just a bit of margin because we don't want to send you alerts when um, when there's actually nothing wrong. So in this case, if the GPS reading is, has an error of five meters, that actually need to be outside of this zone by 25 meters. So what that means is if animals do escape and they're sitting right next to the fence line, you might not, uh, you might not get a reading, you might not get an alert, but if they do wander far enough away, then you should start getting alerts, okay? It was either do it that way or potentially generate a whole bunch of false alerts when they're just inside the fence line. So just keep that in mind. Um, when, when, when getting alerts and, and just be aware of that so that you understand that behavior a bit more. But if you do have any questions, again, uh, get in contact. And if you have any other ideas for the types of alerts that you want generated, then uh, get in contact as well. Thanks.